West Waco Independent School District. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Paul Mata here with the students. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Well, good morning, and we're ready with our students. Coming up first is Denaro Torres. Hi, Daddy. My name is Elena Torres. On behalf of everyone at West Waco ISD, we would like to wish you a happy birthday. I'm I'm really sorry. I uh, there's a lot of echoing, and I cannot hear what the question is. Say your question. My question for you is, why did you choose to be an astronaut? Speak into this one. Why did I choose to be an astronaut? Well, I uh, was probably about your age. I think you were in the third grade. I think I was in the fourth grade. And I watched the first guys walk on the moon, and I thought, wow, cool job. Uh, later in life, uh, they, uh, when I graduated from high school, they picked the first female astronauts. And I still was dreaming of being an astronaut then, uh, so I, that's what I decided to try and do. Speak into the side. Get really close. Hi, Peggy. My name is Damien Garza, and my question for you is, what does your family think about what you do? Well, I hope they're proud of me. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think I think they uh, like what I do uh, and are interested in what I do. My parents are farmers. Uh, and so I grew up in a farm community. It's very different uh, from anything I've chosen to do in, in my life since I graduated from uh, high school and college. But that's been okay. Um, and and they, I know they're proud of me. Yep. Talking to here. Hi, Peggy. Mm -hmm. My name is Ruben Reza. And my question for you is, what kind of challenges have you faced as a female astronaut? Can you say it again? I'm sorry. <laughs> what kind of challenges have you faced as a female astronaut? Oh, that's a good question. And you know, I think everyone faces different challenges in whatever it is that they pursue. I think the things that have made me most successful have been just my uh, work ethic. I, I work really, really hard, and I uh, try to always do my very, very best. And I think that that shows and people recognize that and has always made me uh, succeed, uh, even though in many cases I was the only woman in the room during meetings and uh, in my initial phases at NASA. So I think working hard can overcome a lot of those obstacles that you might face. Proving that you can do the job is the most important thing. You can stand normal. Hi, Penny. My name is Jerry Gonzalez, and my question for you is, have you seen any strange objects in space? Actually, I haven't really seen anything unusual, uh, but the perspective that we have from up here is such that uh, even things that you might have seen on Earth, like, for instance, a meteor coming in, you know, we see a shooting star from Earth, Seeing that from this perspective means that it's below you and so had to get past you uh, <laughs> and miss you to go into the atmosphere. So that's an interesting perspective to see uh, things from, from here at 250 miles above the Earth. You can speak normal. Mm 
Hi Peggy, this is Katie Aguilar, and her question for you is, have you experienced any problems on the ISS? Peggy, the question was, have you ever experienced any problems on the ISS? I'm sorry, I didn't, couldn't even tell from you, <laughs> although that was better. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, Peggy, this is Kaide Aguilar. Her question is, have you ever experienced any problems on the ISS? Actually, um, we, we have had occasional problems on the ISS. Part of our job as astronauts is to fix them when they arise. Uh, for instance, uh, the day after we arrived on orbit here, we had a big problem with the toilet. Uh, our toilet is actually a very sophisticated system that actually takes the urine and, and it processes the water uh, and then it actually makes it uh, clean enough that we use it as drinking water. Um, but in any, in any case, that part of our toilet system was broken and we had to spend a day, uh, an entire day, trying to get that fixed. We had a backup toilet uh, on board, but uh, we always want to have uh, two available, <laughs> just in case. Okay, ready? Hi, Peggy. My name is David Aviles, and my question for you is, what's been your experience with micrometeorites or space debris while aboard the ISS? Actually, that's a really good question. Um, we have to worry a lot about space debris. We have a, a group of people on the ground that actually monitor and track uh, space debris that's very large, uh, which is great uh, for us because anytime it gets relatively close to the station, uh, we can do either a reboost to increase our al altitude to avoid it, or we can actually deboost uh, and slow ourselves down and, and decrease our altitude a little bit just to make sure that we would miss uh, any large debris. So it is a very important problem and concern that we have, and we do track it. Good question. Hi, Peggy. My name is Matthew Leha. My question for you is, when doing your spacewalk on the ISS, do you feel the effects of traveling at 17,500 miles per hour? Actually, it really is kind of hard to have a real sense of traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. Um, it's, it's hard to imagine yourself going that fast. And I think about it in terms of the fact that every 90 minutes we're going around the Earth. And every 45 minutes we see either a sunrise or a sunset. And that gives you more of a sense of speed than actually just looking out the window. That is, unless you're trying to take a picture of a particular spot on the ground, because then it goes by pretty fast. You have to be tracking your target very quickly in order to capture it uh, in the camera. Hi, my name is Joel Ramos. Hi, Peggy, my name is Joel Ramos, and my question is for you is, when you are in space, can you eat hot foods or is everything in a packet? Sorry, I'm not catching him. <laughs> Hi, Peggy, this is Joel Ramos' question is, when you are in space, can you eat hot foods or is everything in a packet? Actually, that's a really great question. We do have a lot of food in packets, um, much like this. The, these packets are like metal foil, and we actually can warm them up in an oven and eat them out of that. So like I have a chicken fajita and a soup here that are uh, actually quite good and taste pretty much like the stuff we have on the ground. A lot of our food though, because we want to save mass and volume is dehydrated, which means we take all the water out of it. And then here we have a machine that we just uh, add the water back into and we have a little food warmer to heat it up uh, if, it, if it's something we want to eat hot. We also have things like that you might recognize here. We just have some like candy coated almonds here. And it's actually 
pretty fun to uh, play with our food in space because it's a little different than on Earth. <laughs> Things float around, so. And um, if you think about it, being in zero gravity, we also have to uh, worry about how we drink things because we can't obviously uh, drink fluids um, out of a glass because fluids wouldn't stay in a glass. So we drink them out of pouches. And our pouches have special little straws on them uh, that c actually close up so that when we're not drinking, uh, the, the liquid doesn't come out. But if you, I'm going to show you what happens when the liquid does come out. It makes it forms a little ball, and and uh, so it's really interesting just the behavior of liquids in zero gravity. You can see that it it just stays on the end there. It's stuck to the end of the straw and forms a little ball. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, Peggy. My name is Derek Rivetta, and my question for you is: What is your favorite experiment that you have conducted in microgravity? What is my favorite? I didn't. Peggy, the question was, what is your favorite experiment that you have done in microgravity? Actually, one of the things I really love about being in microgravity is, uh, and, in, and being in, working in this laboratory here is the fact that we get to work on such a wide variety of different experiments. For me, that's a lot of fun. But I like to grow things on Earth. I like to, uh, flowers and plants. And so for me, growing some cabbage on this flight and on my, another flight, I grew soybeans, which is one of the crops that my dad grows. So that was uh, very interesting to me. But I also like doing the experiments on the humans because that's what helps us understand uh, what we need to do to make it safe for uh, us to go on long duration exploration missions to the moon and Mars and you know all these other places that uh, you folks will be going to in the future. And so it's really important that we do that research on the human body, understanding bone and muscle development um, as, as well as, you know, changes in our vision and other changes in the body. So it's, it's really fun to do those experiments as well. Hi, Peggy. My name is Lorena Cedra, and my question for you is, does your body feel tired as it does on Earth after a long day? Well, I, I do think you get tired, especially like if we do spacewalks, uh, your body gets really physically tired uh, because it's very physically challenging inside the spacesuit. But I think uh, in general up here, I sleep so well that I don't typically feel very tired. So I, I'm very pleased about that. Hi, Peggy. My name is Joshua Alaniz, and my question for you is, what has been your most frightening experience while in space? Well, we train for a lot of things to go wrong in space, and so I think that training tends to make you less frightened about things, but probably the most, uh, what I would call sporty thing that happened is uh, my last descent uh, in the Soyuz spacecraft. One of uh, the separation bolts didn't work, and so we had to do what's called a ballistic reentry, which causes up to eight times the force of gravity on your body, so it feels like eight dudes are sitting on your chest, so it makes it hard to breathe. And uh, that was probably the most uh, off-nominal, we call it off-nominal situation I've ever experienced. Hi, Peggy. My name is Sophia Pesina, and my question for you is, do you think there might be life on another Earth-like planet in another galaxy? 
Well, I know you probably already know that NASA has, and many other uh, agencies are working together and looking for other planets that are Earth-like. And we found literally last year, I believe, over a thousand planets that they consider Earth-like. And so I think that, yes, the chances are, the odds are that, yes, there is other life out there. It might not look at or be exactly like the life as we know it with plants on our Earth or, you know, people won't necessarily be people or look the, quite the same. But, yes, I think there will be other life out there because there just are so many planets out there. Happy birthday. Hi, thank Patrick. you so much. Hi, thank you. My name is Matilda Olivares, and my question for you is: How well do you, how well do you get along with the other astronauts? I didn't quite get that one. Peggy, the question was: How well do you get along with the other astronauts? Actually, that's a really, really important question because obviously we're living up here, uh, the six of us, and getting along is very important. But we also actually have to get along well with our ground teams. And we have ground control teams in Houston and in Huntsville, Alabama, in uh, Tsukuba, in Japan, in Moscow, and in Munich. And so being able to interact well with people is a, a very important skill, being able to communicate effectively with people and tell them um, you know, where the problems are and how to work around them is very important and a very important skill in, in life as well as for being an astronaut. So it's very important. And I happen to be extremely lucky with the, the group of guys that I'm up here with. They are incredibly fun. Uh, incredibly competent, and we really have a good time uh, genuinely uh, in our work here. All right. Hi, Peggy. My name is Ana Yesteo, and my question to you is, what advice can you give us if we want to become an astronaut? Three minutes. Well, well, if you want to become an astronaut, I think probably the most important thing is to pick any field in science, math, or engineering, um, aviation, aerospace engineering. Um, I'm a biochemist. We have physicists. We have all different kinds of scientists, all different kinds of engineers, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, aeronautical engineers. Uh, and we have aviation pilots and test pilots. Um, so. There are lots of different fields, but I think probably the most important piece of advice is that you need to pick something that you really love because you really want to be good at it in order to stand out uh, and be selected as an astronaut. So pursue something that you really, really love in any field of math, science, or engineering. Hi, Peggy. My name is Jubilee Garces, and my question for you is, do you see yourself being an astronaut for the rest of your life? Well, I uh, really haven't ever wanted to do anything else, so I imagine I will always work in the space industry. Uh, I really enjoy uh, NASA, what NASA stands for, exploration. Uh, and space flight. So, yeah, I think I will. Okay, Peggy. Thank you here from West, from all of us in here in Westco. We're going to say happy birthday. Thank you guys so much. You had fantastic questions. I'm sorry I couldn't hear them all very well, but you had really great questions. And uh, just remember, it's always important to pursue your dreams and dream really big. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. And thank you to all the participants and guests from West Waco Independent School District. Station, we're now resuming normal operational calm.